Hello everybody and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be talking a little bit about singer Graham Parsons. Um, I've just recently been getting into his music a lot more now. Um, I only vaguely knew of him from his work with The Birds and I kind of really liked what I was hearing on, on the album that he was involved with with them, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But I wanted, wanted to expand my horizon, see what else he was involved with. So um, let's get started and take a look at his career. Now the first album that he was a part of uh, is this album here. It's called Safe at Home. And this is the, the band that he started while he, he was a student at Harvard University. This is the International Submarine Band, is what they named their, their band. Um, they were formed in 1965, like I said, while he was in uh, Harvard University. Uh, he and his uh, friend here at college, John Nuiz, they um, spent a lot more of their time playing music than they did studying, and they ended up, uh, Graham at least, ended up quitting college uh, before his first semester was even over. So uh, he, he really wanted to get into the, the music business. And uh, they did record and release a couple singles. And there was an album that was never released and it was eventually lost. So we never got to hear that music. But um, over their time, they, they did uh, end up recording this album. Um, they kind of started out in New York and then eventually moved to Los Angeles. Graham was kind of interested in trying to get into some films and things like that. And he was kind of promised by a friend of his that he'd get into films. And it did end up that uh, the International Submarine Band did end up in a film. Uh, you can see a little clip of it on YouTube. I've checked it out before. It's a Peter Fonda film titled The Trip. Uh, they're featured in that, in that film there. And unfortunately, they... They're shown in the background playing their instruments and singing and things, but uh, the music that's playing is not actually performed by them, it's performed by someone else. So uh, not really much much of a career there in films, but um, yeah, this is the album that they ended up recording. Uh, we can see a track listing here. Um, it, some of the, the members left the band and they got new new members in. And then eventually they were assigned to the LHI label, the Lee Hazelwood Productions label here. And this album was, um, yeah, they, they reformed in uh, November of 1967. Like, you know, some of the members had left and we got new ones in. And uh, yeah, the, the album, they recorded this album and it went unreleased for several months. And eventually Graham Parsons was kind of not really happy with their success so he kind of moved on and uh, this album was actually released after he was gone from the band and he moved on to playing with the birds um, this here is a uh, let's see a 2015 reissue this is on colored vinyl and you can see here that it says that it's uh, widely regarded as the record that launched the country rock movement um, until I started getting into Graham's music, I'd never actually even heard of this album or the band. So um, here this, you can see this is on white vinyl. It's pretty cool. But it is a really good album. There's lots of great, like, you know, country rock, like it says. There's a lot of good stuff on here, and it's really interesting to listen to. And this was released uh, in March of 1968. Like I said, after Graham had already left the band and he'd moved on, um, he was then recruited by The Birds, and they started working on this album here, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. Now this is where I first heard Graham for the you know for the first time, and this is a big departure from The Birds' previous albums. They're, they they recorded a couple songs here and there that had kind of a country sound to it, um, but this was their first one that was pretty much all country you know this is a straight pretty much straight country country album um so this was released in 19 august of 1968 um graham parsons he joined joined the birds right after leaving the the previous band in february of 1968 and by the time this album was released um it was 
about a month before this was released, he'd already left the band. So he was actually only with the birds for about five months. Um, they, they, uh, in May, they went on a, a short European tour and then, uh, Graham had kind of, or they kind of hooked up with Keith Richards and Mick Jagger and Keith and Graham really struck up a friendship and they did a lot of hanging out together. Here's the label. And then after they got back from their European tour, they were gonna gonna go on a tour of South Africa, but uh, that really wasn't something that Graham wanted to do. So he ended up quitting the band, and he spent a lot of time with uh, with Keith Richards. And so at, recording this album, there's a lot of the tra tracks on here have Graham Parsons on lead vocal. Um, before the album was released. There was kind of some legal issues with his previous rec record contract with Lee Hazelwood where uh, he wasn't supposed to be allowed to record new tracks and things like that. So a lot of the, a lot of the songs on here were uh, the lead vocals were overdubbed by Roger McGuinn and um, you know in later years Graham really wasn't too too happy about that. Um, some say that it was partly Roger's idea as well you know he didn't want this to be a a Graham Parsons album. He wanted it to be a Birds album, so um, a little bit of animosity there. Even even years later, he kind of regretted that. But um, I do have the Legacy Edition CD, which is a double CD set. Uh, so if you want to check that out, this the second disc on here has uh, a lot of the original recordings with Graham's lead vocals brought you know brought back, and they don't have Roger singing on those songs. So that's a good one to check out too. So like I said, he was only with uh, the Birds for five months. He quit in August and then uh, after that he started another band that maybe you've heard of, the Flying Burrito Brothers. This is their first album. Uh, this was released in February of 1969 and here we have uh, Graham Parsons over here and then uh, a fellow bird, uh, Chris Hillman, he left the birds and they both started this band together and they got Chris Etheridge on uh, bass guitar and uh, Sneaky Pete here, he's a slide guitar player and it's just a really really good country album, uh, country rock I should say. A lot of great stuff on this one. And you can see there they got their nice country nudie suits on. <laughs> And there's the track listing there. Now this is a this is a pretty brand new reissue. This is a 2020 reissue of the album. And here's what the labels look like on there. And now over the years, even before he had hooked up with the the Rolling Stones and things like that, he was getting into uh, some drug and alcohol issues and things weren't really going the greatest you know people he wasn't getting a lot of the a lot of work done um, spent a lot of his time on drugs so um, after that first album uh, the next year in April of 1970 they came out with this album here it's the Flying Burrito Brothers again this is the album Burrito Deluxe uh, this here is a uh, 2015 music on vinyl reissue and we'll take a look at this one here you can see that without the glare so here we got another ex uh, bird member that is uh, Michael Clark he ends up joining the band on this one for on drums and I think on the on the previous album they kind of had some session drummers and things like that. So they never really had a full time drummer. So we got X Bird Michael Clark on drums, and then we also got um, Bernie Le Ledin Leiden. I can't remember how you pronounce his name. Um, he's on the bass guitar. So the Chris Etheridge left, and then Bernie started on on guitar. So. Um, uh, Chris Hillman was able to go back to his former role as bass guitar player on this. So, 
and this was on a and m records we can take a look at the the label here uh, by the time they got to this this album um chris hillman and graham parsons were kind of going through a dry spell trying to come up with songs they were having a hard time um they did end up getting a lot you know, a full album full of songs, and there, there's a lot of good stuff on here, too. This is still a really good good country rock album. Uh, one thing here to note, too, is uh, this is, you know, as I said, he Graham had been spending time with Keith Richards. They've been become really good friends. And in late uh, 1969, uh, Keith Richards had showed um, Graham Parsons the, the song Wild Horses, that would eventually be on the Sticky F Rolling Stones Sticky Fingers album. Um, but before it was released by the Stones, they actually recorded th that song for this album here. So we got the first recorded version of Wild Horses on this album. And they do a really, really good job on this, on that song here. So it's kind of interesting. But like I said, he was really getting heavy into the, the amphetamines and drugs and drinking and things like that. And they ended up kicking him out of the band. And it's just unfortunate. And then oh, it was several years later, you know, he'd spent a lot of time trying to get through that period in his life. And then he did end up recording uh, a solo album here. This is GP, is called. And this one here is, uh, let's see, this is a 2007 reissue. I can see if we can get that focus. And this is, yeah, you know, like I said, this is his first solo album. Um, this album was really critically acclaimed. Like, the critics really enjoyed this album, but it did not actually chart at all on any, you know, billboard or anything like that. It didn't get any chart success. And one thing to note too on this album, this is where um, Graham Parsons was introduced to Emmy Lou Harris. And so she does. Uh, harmonies and vocal and backup vocals with him on this album and that really adds a nice touch she's got a, a really great voice but yeah it's still recording this album he was again drunk a lot um showed up to sessions late um really wasn't in the working mood you know but they eventually got through the album and got it got it put out and then after that, uh, that was released in January of 1973. So later that summer, he started work on his second solo album. And um, he'd kind of tried to tried to take care of his, his drinking and things like that, but it just really wasn't going too well. Um, this is the his second and final solo album here. This is called Grievous Angel. Again, another 2007 reissue. So late, uh, yeah, you know, the, this were all recorded in the summer of 1973, and by the end of the summer, Graham Parsons, unfortunately, uh, he made a trip out to the desert, and he overdosed on drugs and passed away. Well, this isn't going to focus too well, but... Um, yeah, just, just too bad. And this is... This is a really, really good album. You can see here that this is Graham Parsons with Emmy Lou Harris. Uh, she does a lot more singing on this album, and it's just their two voices together just work really good. Uh, so yeah, this was released four months after his death. And the original idea, his his wife kind of changed some things on the album. Originally, this was going to have a picture of him on a motorcycle with Emmy Lou Harris on the back. Um, but his wife, after he died, had that changed. It's just a picture of him, and then she even moved her name to the back cover. So I don't, she wasn't too fond of their their working relationship. But anyway, there's the labels on this one. Now, I'm sure I missed a lot of details in Graham Parsons' life and his career and things like that, but. Um, I just recently watched, I, I found a documentary online that you can see. Um, it's called Graham Parsons' Fallen Angel. It's a really, really good, uh, about a 90-minute documentary. 
Uh, if I can, if I can find that again, I'll try and leave the link in the in the description down here so you can watch it. It was free. I found it for free. You didn't have to pay for it <laughs> to watch it. So it was it was really interesting. I learned a lot of stuff from that, and it was it was good to, good to see that. So those are pretty much all his albums that he was on. I'm sure there's plenty of other outtakes and things like that that are available on different CDs and albums and things. But uh, this is pretty much what I have right now. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. And go out and check out his music now. It's really, really worth it. Take care, everybody.